NES Maker Bite Off was a competition held in 2019 where different people would make their own demo games and the winner would get their own game on a cartridge. Daniel T Gaming, who I'm sure you're very much familiar with, has made his own game. You've probably heard of it. Nessie the NES Robot. Right off the top of the bat here, if you look, all these thumbnails look much better than this. The art style in Nessie the NES Robot is very jarring, basic, and looks like it was designed in Microsoft Paint. Now let's look at this game. This is called Momuk. It's another one of the entries for the competition, and I personally think it looks much better, and looks like it had much more purpose and time put into it than Nessie the NES Robot. Nessie the NES Robot also has a bit of problem with control. The jumping feels very awkward. It's almost comparable to the Cheetah Men game off the Action 52 cartridge. It's just very weird. Like When you press it, it just goes straight up. It doesn't feel like the jumping you're used to in a typical platformer. But what do we get when we start this up? Oh my god. First of all, this text looks absolutely horrible. The first four letters are fine, but the Y... It just, it takes up more space than the other letters. It'd have been better if you designed the letter to look like this. That'd look much better. But yeah. Also, let's listen to this awesome music we're graded to. I don't know if this was intentional, but the music sounds broken. This is the first thing you experience when you open up the game is a broken menu. Another problem is the level design. It's hard to interpret what things are actually meant to do. You think you can jump on this platform, but nope. You don't know what things like this bubble thing do, but you know, whatever. Also, for the first 15 minutes of this game, I didn't know you had this firing mechanic, because most of the stuff I could do was just by jumping. I didn't know that I could kill the enemies by firing. You wanna know why? Because the enemies don't deal any damage! You could straight up run right into them and nothing happens. For example, even if you let the final boss kill you, nothing happens. You just generate right back out the door, and then you can try again. There is no incentive to not die. You just go until you not die. Want to know something interesting? There's a lot of exploitable glitches in this game. If you want to become a millionaire at this game, just go run off, run back to the screen, and there you are. Jewel regenerated. Although it does create some very weird graphical glitches like this one here, but you know, whatever. And also, at this point here, I actually fell down a pit it glitched and I went to the second level. No joke, no cap, I'm being serious. Even if you do manage to somehow kill yourself, you just generate back where you were. You don't restart the whole thing. A, a heart doesn't get subtracted if you fall into like a pit or something. Another problem is the inconsistency in the difficulty. So, for example, level 1 is actually harder than level 2. Personally, I do not think Daniel to Gaming made a good game here, and I think there's much better candidates for what is the best game. Out of the two levels that are in it, neither one of them are really good. So that was the demo version. I'm hoping they can fix a lot of these bugs in the new one. Like, for example, being able to generate infinite jewels, actually have an incentive to not dying, when you can just recover your progress in five seconds. And also, make it a bit more obvious what things are meant to do. Like the bubbles. I, I didn't know that you could jump off of those. I thought they were just part of the background or something. I don't know. It's very... Very weird. But yeah, thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.